my name is Carolyn Carter Thomas. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Empower In. So, I really wanted to do this video for you, and in this video, we're going to discuss one of the leading causes of death and disability in America, and that is a cerebral vascular accident or a stroke. The role of the nurse when it comes to assessing patients that could be at risk for a stroke is so important because we are the ones that see the patient first, and if we can recognize the early signs and symptoms of a stroke, we can save a patient from death or serious disability. So I'm really happy to do this tutorial for you. I really hope that you like it. If you do, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and posting a comment. And let's get started. A stroke is a sudden impairment of the brain's blood circulation in one or more blood vessels. A stroke impairs or decreases oxygen supply and can cause serious or permanent damage or necrosis to the brain cells and tissue. There are two different types of strokes, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic is caused from a reduction in the blood flow and hemorrhagic is caused from blood vessels in your brain leaking or rupturing. There are a few different things that can cause a stroke. A thrombosis or thrombotic stroke, these are medical terms for blood clots. The way this happens is that it occludes the blood flow to the brain. The word occlude is a medical term for block. So when we say the vessel has been occluded or blocked, this means that the blood flow was clogged. A clot may be caused by fatty deposits, plaque, that build up on the arteries and can cause a reduction in the blood flow. Another cause of the stroke could be from an embolism. An embolism is an object that is created in one part of the body, but when it travels, it can cause blockage in another part of the body. For example, a blood clot can be formed in the atrium of the heart from atrial fibrillation. But then part of it becomes dislodged, circulates throughout the body, and then blocks the blood throwing through a vessel in another part of the body. When this happens in the brain, it is called a stroke. The last type of stroke is called a hemorrhagic stroke. A hemorrhagic is a medical term for bleeding, but we usually use this word when there is a lot of bleeding or when the bleeding is in a critical area of the body, such as the brain. Regardless of the cause, the brain's underlying problem is that the brain is being deprived vital oxygen and nutrients. If the cerebral blood flow remains impaired for more than a few minutes, an infarcation of the brain tissues can happen within minutes. The word infarct means to describe dead tissues. For example, when this happens in the heart, you have a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. When this happens in the brain, it is essentially a brain infarct or brain attack, but another word for this is stroke. Both thrombotic and embolic strokes can cause ischemia, which means inadequate blood supply to an organ. This happens because both can clog the vessel. For example, let's say that this exemplifies a normal blood flow of the vessel. If the thrombus is forming, then there will be less room and it will not flow as easily. It could eventually become completely clogged. When a hemorrhage is the cause of the stroke, the impaired blood flow can cause serious swelling of the brain, which also increases the intracranial pressure, also known as ICP. An increase in the intracranial pressure could deprive the tissue vital nutrients and thus cause the tissue to die or infarct. The signs and symptoms of a stroke rely heavily on the area affected. For example, the right part of your brain controls the left side of your body, and the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. Also, there are many different parts of the brain that control different parts of your body. For example, in the back of your brain is the occipital lobe, which is in control of the visual center. There is also the Broca's area, which controls speech. So pretty much wherever the injury occurs, you will probably see corresponding clinical manifestations in your patient. Some signs and symptoms of, of a stroke are hemiparesis, which is weakness on one side of the body. Hemisensory loss, or loss of sensation, such as the ability to feel or touch on one area or one side of your body. Altered level of consciousness. So you may have a patient who could previously speak to you coherently and answer who they were, where they were, what the date is, and why they were where they were. But there's a sudden change, a sudden inability to answer these questions appropriately. Other symptoms include headache, dizziness, visual disturbance, and anxiety. Also, dysphagia which means difficulty swallowing, aphasia, difficulty using language or understanding language, and dizziness, also known as vertigo, dysarthria, or difficulty saying words. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of a stroke are critical for the nurse. A common acronym we use is ACT FAST. F stands for the face. Ask your patient to smile. 
does one side of their face droop? A is arms. Ask your patient to hold out their arms and then close their eyes. Does one arm drift downwards? Speech. Ask your patient to repeat a phrase like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Is their speech flirt, slurred or does it sound strange? Time. Find out exactly what time the signs and symptoms started as treatment options are based on this. Further evaluation can be completed by the nurse using the NIH stroke scale, which is an intensive systematic neurologic assessment tool that assists the medical team to evaluate the severity or progression of a stroke. It would be a good idea for you to read the steps on the stroke scale, so I place a link below. Once you suspect that your patient may be having a stroke, diagnostic tests must be performed STAT. Some diagnostic exams are a CT or a computed tomography scan, which basically means x-ray of the brain. This is performed within minutes of the patient's arrival to the hospital. This scan can identify an ischemic stroke within 72 hours of the symptoms and a hemorrhagic stroke immediately. MRI exams can also be performed to assist in identifying areas of ischemia, infarcation, and also brain swelling. Carotid angiography is a test that uses dye with special x-rays to show the inside of the carotid arteries. Carotid dopplers can also be done, and these are a non-invasive ultrasound that can measure the blood flow through the carotid vessels. Treatment. It is important to note that the treatments for the ischemic stroke are very different than that of the hemorrhagic stroke. So let's go over them. Ischemic stroke. If it is within the first three hours of onset, sometimes longer depending on your facility, a medication can be given to dissolve a blood clot. This medication is called tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA for short. Other treatments include aspirin, warfarin, and heparin. These medications can prevent the blood clot from becoming larger and creating more ischemia. A carotid endurectomy can also be performed, which is a surgical removal of plaque, which will help prevent further strokes. I just wanted to point out that when there's a medical term that ends in ectomy, this means the surgical removal of a specified part of the body. The treatments of a hemorrhagic stroke include aneurysm clipping. This is a small metallic clip or clips along the neck of an aneurysm. This prevents blood from entering the aneurysm sac so that it can no longer pose a risk for bleeding. Another treatment is coiling. Coiling uses the natural access to the brain through the bloodstream via the arteries to diagnose and treat brain aneurysms. The goal of the treatment is to safely seal off the aneurysm and stop further blood from entering the aneurysm, increasing the risk of rupture or possible bleeding. Some long-term complications of a stroke include paralysis, difficulty swallowing or talking, memory loss or trouble understanding, pain, pressure ulcers, and infection. So let's look at some NCLEX type questions that you might see. Remember, it is important to think in question mode because this is how you will be tested in nursing school. These questions are from amy47.com. The link is below. Which assessment data would indicate to the nurse that a client would be at risk for a hemorrhagic stroke? A, a blood glucose level of 480. B, a right-sided carotid bruit, a pressure of 220 over 120, or for the presence of bronchogenic carcinoma. So let's think about this. A blood glucose level can worsen the damage of a stroke when it happens, but it is not exactly the cause of hemorrhagic stroke. A right-sided carotid bruit may be a sign of stenosis, but this would be associated with an ischemic stroke and not a hemorrhagic stroke. The presence of bronchogenic carcinoma is a type of cancer in the lungs, but it's not directly related to a stroke. However, a severe elevation in blood pressure, which is also known as a hypertensive crisis, is a major cause of a hemorrhagic stroke and needs to be treated immediately. And that would be your answer. This next question is from freezingblue.com, and the link again will be below. A 78-year-old client is admitted to the emergency department with numbness and weakness of the left arm and slurred speech. Which nursing intervention is a priority? Prepare to administer recumbent tissue plasminogen activator, RTPA. Two, discuss the precipitating factors that cause the symptoms. Three, schedule for a stat computed tomography or CT scan of the head. Or four, notify the speech pathologist of an emergency consult. So let's analyze these. For the first option, prepare to administer TPA. 
Well, we don't know if it's a hemorrhagic or a ischemic stroke. And if you were to have a patient that was having a hemorrhagic stroke and you gave them TPA, you would cause serious harm. So that can't be our answer yet. We have to know what we're treating first. The second option, discuss the precipitating factors that cause the symptoms. This is an emergency. We really don't have time to get all of the facts. So that really can't be the option. The fourth option, notify the speech pathologist for an emergency consult. That will never be your answer. A speech pathologist will, will never be like a stat consult. Um, because really, that's like a therapy consult or a diagnostic consult to see what kind of you know diet they need to tolerate. So this just this just can't be your answer. You have to know what you're treating. That's you know, vital. So the CAT scan has got to be your answer. This next question is from studyguidesong.com. And again, the link like all the others is below. Thrombolytic therapy is frequently used in the treatment of suspected stroke. Which of the following is a significant complication associated with a thrombolytic therapy? One, an air embolism. Two, a cerebral hemorrhage. Three, expansion of a blood clot. Or four, the resolution of a clot. So let's think about this. An air embolism is not really a concern because this is caused by gas in the circulatory system. This is a main concern with deep sea diving, so that's not really an option. An expansion of the clot is not possible because we are giving a strong medication that will dissolve the clot or resolve the clot, excuse me. The fourth option or resolution of the clot is a positive outcome and that's really what we want. And the question is asking for a complication related to this medication. So we are left with our only option, which is the second option, number two, which is the main risk of receiving this medication, and that is hemorrhaging. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helps you out. Um, if you liked it, please, again, give it a thumbs up and share with all your friends. And I cannot wait to see you again soon. So bye. Love you.